Hello friends, I'm Dr. Dave Layton and thank you for joining us in this ongoing study of how we can develop and enhance uh, effective Christian education ministry. Uh, we are involved in a general way in this study of looking at different things that we can do to uh, bring glory to God, of course, but also to enhance uh, the uh, spiritual growth of those who participate in our Bible classes. In the first unit, we define Christian education as the totality of our efforts. As we find out who Jesus was, uh, what he did, what he continues to do, and then, of course, our response to that. Uh, in the second unit, uh, we, we took a look at some different uh, ways that we can enhance our Christian education by answering some important questions. Uh, as to why we do it, what we do it, who does Christian education, what it is that we teach, uh, and, and who does the teaching. Now, in this particular lesson, uh, we're going to look at some elements that help provide an effective Christian education program. Now, please understand these are general in nature, and in other uh, classes, other presentations, we look in detail about some of these things. I certainly encourage you to study uh, to, to seek the ways in which you can improve uh, this very important role we have of providing education and understanding to, uh, to our learners. Now, I do have three particular learning outcomes that I'd like to discuss throughout this lesson. Uh, the first is uh, I want us to understand what the elements of effective Christian education programs are. Uh, second, I want us to commit to building, designing, and, and of course, delivering effective Christian education programs. And then I want us to do something with it. I want us to actually apply this information. I want us to create uh, excellent programs so that our learners can grow spiritually to become Christ-like. Well, let's take a look now at these elements. The first element uh, that I'd like to uh, take a look at is that a program is based on understanding of God's Word. We said in an earlier lesson that Christian education, by the nature of its name, is based on Christ, centered on Christ. Uh, our, our Savior is at the heart of everything. Now, uh, we also said that uh, it, your it, Christian education efforts need to be Bible-based. And so we're restating that. We have to gain an understanding of God's Word so that we can uh, not only design uh, our programs to be Bible-based, but to help others grow in their knowledge based on what Scripture teaches us. All Christian education must start with programs that lead to knowledge of God's Word. Uh, knowledge is the first level of learning and provides a starting place in which we're transformed, as Paul states, the renewing of our minds, and it's done uh, initially by studying and learning God's Word. Now, I use the word understanding, and I use the word knowledge. Understanding is actually a little bit of a higher level. This is, this is where we not only uh, are aware of what uh, God's Word says, but we begin to take it inside. We begin to internalize it and take ownership for us, for it. And when we do that, it begins to transform us. So again, as, as, as we do that, uh, we, we have to determine uh, what must become known. And we focus uh, it, it, on the purpose of our study on, on a variety of topics. Now, there's three basic areas that we need to focus on. Uh, the first is we have to determine, is the purpose of our study to evangelize or is it to edify? And the third is to equip. Now, if the purpose is evangelism, well, that's a reaching out process, and that's teaching the basic elements of uh, what our Lord teaches us, what scriptures contain regarding our salvation. Now, if the purpose is edification, this is the building up. The focus is on encouraging and, and helping others grow spiritually into maturity. Uh, this is also known as a discipling process, where we help each other grow into who God wants us to be. If the purpose is equipping, now we're starting to look at uh, not just the application of it, but, but taking it out and sharing it with others. So this is more of a skill building uh, focus, uh, the, the skill on, on reaching out and teaching others about our salvation. 
So the answer to these three questions will obviously vary from person to person, uh, even situation to situation. It, it really depends on where that person is in their spiritual maturity, uh, perhaps uh, their readiness to learn as well. Now, in reality, uh, we should be ready to teach all three of these in, in our efforts to have a successful Christian education program. But we need to, again, consider what is the primary purpose of our classes and build our programs of study around those. Uh, remember, we must consider where a person is in, in their uh, intellectual development, their spiritual development, their willingness, their readiness to learn. It doesn't mean that we withhold information from God's word, but we teach based on where a person is. And then we help them, we guide them into other areas of instruction. So our objective of Christian education is not only to provide knowledge and understanding of God's word, but to, to help that transformation in ourselves and in others. All right, a, a second element of an effective Christian education program is perception. Perception is, is when we take a broader view, uh, a deeper view, of, of uh, understanding regarding God's word. Uh, we look at what it says and how we are to apply it in our lives. Uh, in a spiritual sense, perception means we're seeing it from God's view. Perception goes beyond basic knowledge. It goes into a deeper level of understanding of God's will in our lives. It's not just an awareness of it, but it says, okay, what is it that God wants me to do? Uh, help me understand what God wants me to do so that I can apply it. Uh, knowledge is learning what God has said and done and commands us to do, but perception is understanding the why and what he wants us to do. Perception really encourages us to love God more because we understand the reasons behind what God has done. It's not just an awareness of what he's done, but why did he grant us grace? Why did he forgive our sins through our Savior, Jesus Christ? And so we learn how to uh, better uh, handle the trials and temptations we face because we have that deeper understanding. Without perception, uh, we're in danger of falling due to a lack of understanding. Uh, we're subject to error. We're subject to uh, deviating from God's wisdom as we uh, misapply it or misunderstand it or even begin to take on man's wisdom rather than God's wisdom. A third element of an effective Christian education program is commitment. A general definition of commitment is it's a dedication to our beliefs. Our commitment stems from our values and, and these impact these values impact our commitment. They impact our motivation. Uh, we value something or some concept, our understanding of Scripture, and, and we believe what we're reading, what we're learning from God's Word to be true. Uh, we then are motivated to act upon that or to refrain from acting if it's something uh, that our Savior does not want us to do. So our Christian education programs, uh, they teach the elements of spiritual life. They teach praying and studying and, and uh, sharing the gospel and worshiping our Lord. But if all of these don't foster commitment, then it's going to be difficult for us and for those who are learners to remain on course, to continue in this journey of spiritual growth. You know, there's a myriad of other things that we teach, but all of the things that we teach need to lead toward our dedication our continued service to our Lord. And spiritual growth is a journey. It's a journey to Christ's likeness. And so without commitment, we're easily led astray. We're easily discouraged. Uh, Jesus spoke of the value of commitment in uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 and 38. Uh, this has been referred to as the great commitment. Friends, truly, if we do not have the great commitment, it's going to be difficult for us to follow through as we should with the great commission. We have to be willing to put Jesus before everything in our lives. All right, a fourth element of effective Christian education is application. It does no good to learn 
about something and even to know that we need to do something if in fact we don't see how and follow through with the how to actually apply God's word. So application is taking the theoretical and making it apply to life. Application is focused on doing. Our Lord emphasized the value of doing on several occasions in his teachings. Uh, he characterized in uh, Matthew chapter 7 that uh, someone that does not do is someone who is foolish. And he uses the example of someone who builds a house on sand. And when the storms come in, and the storms of life are certainly going to happen, but when the storms come in, they wash it away. And that's what happens if we have not uh, built our faith on application, made it a part of who we are, and lived the life God wants us to do. We will face storms in life. And if we don't have a firm foundation, then uh, we'll be easily washed away. So application is important. Uh, an effective Christian education program must include application for our Christian living. Well, let me summarize by talking about, again, the four elements that we look at that help us develop an effective Christian education program. Now, we, say to the, we stated that these were uh, understanding of God's Word, knowledge of God's Word, uh, perception, commitment, and application. Now, these elements will greatly enhance uh, the potential for success of our programs and help our spiritual growth as well as the spiritual growth of others. Now, we stated in our introduction in this series of lessons that our Lord placed an incredible uh, responsibility and opportunity, truly, uh, regarding his graceful plan for man's reconciliation. Now, we, we, we accomplish his will, uh, this plan, through our Christian education ministry. Uh, we not only teach who Jesus was, but we teach what he did, what he does, continues to do, uh, and then our response to that. But we also uh, see how our relationship with God impacts every aspect of our lives. So the end result is that we grow spiritually into who God wants us to be. God wants us to be like Christ. And the more like Christ we become, the more spiritually mature we are. Now, again, it's not earning any greater level of salvation or earning salvation at all. It's our response to the love that God shows for us, our recognition of that love, and our dedication to him. Well, this concludes our introduction to developing and enhancing Christian education ministry. I thank you for your participation. And friends, in all things, we give God the glory. Thank you.